Jonah here from Green Schools. Today for our virtual field trip, we are visiting Mark and Ryan at Baseline. And what they do is demand side management. So let's go chat with them and figure out what that is. All right, well, thank you so much for having us in today. We're really excited to learn about what you do here at Baseline. But before we get started, why don't you just introduce yourselves? Who are you and what do you do at Baseline? Uh, so I'm Ryan Kelly, I'm the president here, uh, and I'm a professional engineer. And I'm Mark Robertson, I'm the vice president, and I'm also a professional engineer. So Baseline Energy Analytics, or Baseline, is an engineering consulting company, and we operate in the DSM world. Hey. So we don't run the DSM programs ourselves. We're a company that helps out other companies that are involved in designing or delivering those programs. Okay, and what exactly is DSM? Great question. Part one, demand side management. What is DSM? So if you try and imagine the electricity system in your mind, there are sort of two sides to it. There's the supply side and the demand side. The supply side is all of the different ways to generate electricity. They're supplying the electricity. The demand side is all of the people who are using electricity, all the homes and businesses that use electricity. The supply side, they have to generate, the amount that they need to generate is sort of determined by how much electricity people want to use. So demand side management is a term we use to describe all of the different programs and initiatives that impact the way that people use energy and help people reduce the amount of energy that they use so that we can reduce the amount of electricity that needs to be generated. A, prog a program that helped people change other light bulbs will, would be called a demand-side management program. Why is demand-side management important? So demand-side management, or DSM, is important, I would say, for two reasons. One is that it's going to be cheaper. So whether you're the utility um, or whether you're a customer, it's always going to be cheaper to reduce your energy use than to generate more electricity. So that's the first point. The second point is it's gonna be better th for the environment. So if you have the option of generating energy from a coal power plant or simply reducing the amount of energy that's being used, it's always gonna be better for the environment to reduce the energy that you use. Why is it important to manage electricity and demand? As an example, you get home from school, your parents get home from work, a really cold day, everyone turns on the heat. And if everyone does that at the same time, that's a strain on the grid for the power company. And so if you're the power company, you need to decide, do I need to build a new power plant? Because all these people are coming home at the same time and turning up their heat. Demand side management helps address that. Um, you can run programs that mean you're using more efficient heating systems or you're changing the timing of when people turn their heat on so that the utility doesn't have to build a new power plant. How do we know that DSM is working? So DSM is fortunately very measurable. So we talked about a few examples before. Uh, let's use lighting as an example. When you replace an old incandescent light, like a light bulb shaped light uh, with an LED light, you can measure how much energy it used before and how much energy it used after. And so in that sense, you can identify the exact impact of running DSM programs and use that uh, for utility planning or for a government to um, help plan out how it'll meet emissions targets. So if you're worried about climate change, these programs are a really effective way to produce some real impacts. You don't have to cross your fingers and hope that emissions are gonna be reduced. We know before the programs are even approved, what, how much emissions are going to be reduced. Part two, DSM in action. This is a very simple, common type of heater. It's an electric resistance baseboard. And the way it works is by passing an electrical current through the heater, it heats up and the air passes through the heater and warms up the room. These types of heaters are pretty efficient. For every one unit of electric energy you put in, you get one unit of heat energy out. The heater is directly converting electric energy into heat energy. That means electric resistance heating is nearly 100% efficient. Now this is a heat pump. It's quite different from an electric baseboard, which uses electric energy to turn into heat. The heat pump uses that electric energy to pump heat from the outside to inside the house. Heat pumps aren't the only thing that operates in this way. Your refrigerator does the same thing only it pumps the heat from inside the fridge to outside of the fridge. Remember our electric baseboards? 
they converted electricity into heat. Heat pumps don't need to generate heat. They move heat from the outside to the inside, and it requires one unit of electricity to move three units of heat. That means that heat pumps are 300% efficient. So that's how heat pumps and electric resistance heating works in theory, but the electric company needs to know exactly how much energy you're saving. And that's where measurement comes in. Energy use can be measured with these tools. A current transformer, or CT, this is a type of sensor, a data logger, and a computer. A CT is a type of sensor that can tell how much electrical current flows through a wire. The data logger reads the measurements from the CT, and an electrician installs both the CT and the data logger and leaves it there for as long as you need to perform your measurements. The data logger collects information over time, and when it's done, an engineer collects the data from the logger so they can read it on their computer. Now imagine we installed the CT and the data logger on our electric baseboard. You would see something like this. The baseboard uses 1500 watts. A watt is a unit of electrical power. We call this red line the baseline. That's how much energy you use before upgrading to a heat pump. If we did the same thing for the heat pump, you'd see a line like this. The heat pump uses about 500 watts. The difference in the heat pump line and the electric resistance line is the energy savings. Part three, all about baseline. So you're both business owners. You own this business together. Did either of you go to business school? We did not go to business school. Um, a lot of what we've learned is just learning by doing. Okay. So we have, you know, 10 plus years of experience in this industry. And in doing so, it's sort of uh, trial by fire, right? Like you're, you're out there, you're doing the work, you're engaging with people in the industry. And that's a big part of it is knowing who's out there, what they do, what they're good at, who you can work with. Um, so we got to the point where we felt comfortable enough with the industry and the business that we could transfer some of those skills and kind of fill in on our own. Yeah, hearing that and knowing that, like what are maybe some key things or skills that you learn in old jobs that are helping you with the business side of things specifically? Um, well, there's all sorts of sort of business customs, like the way that people talk to each other in meetings, sort of the tone that they use, how frequently they send uh, emails or who to book uh, to come to a certain meeting. Right. It's all sorts of stuff like that that we just learned by doing and, and learned by watching other people. So what is something that's happening in the sort of energy and environment field that you are excited to be working on or something that's coming up that you're excited to do? We're in a position to deal with new problems as they come up, right? A lot of stuff is changing. The way the electricity grid works is changing. The way people use energy is changing. The technologies that people have in their homes and businesses are changing. Some of these changes are solutions to problems that used to exist. Some of them create new problems. And we're in a position now where when these new problems arise, we can sort of be there on the forefront of trying to understand them and figure out what to do about them. With all of your experience, you know, working at Efficiency Nova Scotia, starting a new business, I guess what is like one piece of advice that you would give to kids or teens who want to work in energy uh, and or maybe want to start their own business one day? I think for now, probably just focus on learning everything you can. Um, you know, like I just said, a lot of stuff's changing. Who knows exactly the specifics about what you're going to need to know 10, 15, 20 years from now. What you can focus on is just learning fundamentals, math, science, economics, social studies. All of that stuff is going to be going to be relevant in the future. And yeah, we did chat a little bit about sort of you mentioned that you got started in engineering. Uh, so is it kind of a similar story for both of you? Like what sort of what was your path leading to DSM? Did you always know that you wanted to work in energy or did one thing lead to the next? What was your pathway to this career? Um, yeah, I think when I left high school, um, I applied for engineering just because my strength at the time was like math and sciences. Once I got to university, I remember I took a course and it just explained the concepts of DSM to me. Um, and that's when it sort of clicked for me to say, okay, I can apply those skills to something that I think is going to be really impactful. Mm -hmm. I chose my discipline, which was environmental engineering. And, uh, applied for a job at Efficiency Nova Scotia and got lucky and that was sort of my, my foot in the door. Um, but I, I didn't know that right away. I didn't know that even when I went to university. Um, I just learned a lot about it uh, leading up to that decision. And so in starting in high school, I was involved in the theater, doing tech theater type work, built a lot of sets, did the sound and lights for the shows there. That kind of got me interested in the, in the trades because I was spending a lot of time yeah. building stuff. 
And so after high school, I spent a year working as an electrician apprentice. I was wiring, mostly wiring residential homes. And I took a program called Automated Systems Engineering Technology. It was a two year technical course in Calgary at the Southern Alberta Institute of Technology. So that led to a couple of summer jobs where I was helping to design and build equipment for a manufacturing process. I worked for a company that made building materials. And after I finished that program, I moved out to Halifax, went to Dalhousie University, took engineering. I also took environmental engineering. It was a year behind Ryan. I did a, a one co-op term working for a, a, an energy consulting firm in Nova Scotia. And then after I graduated, um, I, Ryan had told me about Efficiency Nova Scotia and I applied there. It took me three interviews before they hired me, but uh, yeah, that was in 2012 and worked there for 12 years. So what does a typical day at baseline look like? Is your day kind of the same every time or do things change? Well, it might not look very interesting. A typical day is the two of us arrive in this little office space and we sit at our desks and spend a lot of the day with our headphones on, typing emails or having phone calls with people. Sometimes we spend some time talking to each other about what we're working on. Sometimes we, uh, I slide over to Ryan's desk and we both go on his webcam for a phone call. Sometimes he comes a few feet over and visits me. It's a lot of meetings and emails. Yeah, it's, it's quite a balance. I will say that um, DSM broadly is not something that is exclusive to engineers. That's the path that we took. Um, but at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is change the way people use energy. And having an understanding of the technical side of things is really helpful. Mm. But it is also a place for people, uh, for marketers, for economists, for behavioral scientists. So there's lots of ways into this business. I think for us, uh, the way our brains work is very technical. We went down the engineering path. And so that helps us with our work. But as a small business owner, you've also got to have uh, the people skills and the communication skills. You're right. constantly meeting with folks and trying to understand what their needs and expectations are so that you can work effectively with them. Okay. And so what I'm hearing too a little bit is that you don't necessarily have to have gone down one path to work in DSM. There's lots of different ways that you can be successful in this area. Yeah. And I think that's one of the coolest things about this industry and this career path is, you know, we got to work with a lot of really smart people who are smart in ways that are different from us. Mm. Um, and because it's such a big problem that you're trying to solve this whole energy transition, net zero, changing the way people do things. It's not just a problem you can solve with engineering. Uh, so you've got to work with all these different people to do that. Okay. That's very cool.